It's time for service throughout the foyer today, if you hear me. Hallelujah. We're so glad to be in the presence of the Lord one more time. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's go ahead and give him a hand clap right now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So glad that the presence of the Lord is going to be in this place. Let's, let's try to stop thinking about what's happened before service and what's going to happen after service. And let us focus on what the Lord is going to do here today. Amen? Hallelujah. When we begin to focus, that's when God's going to come in. Hallelujah. Like the Sunday school lesson, like a mighty rushing wind. Amen. He's going to fuel the house. He said where two or three are gathered in the midst. He said I would be in the midst. Amen. Hallelujah. And I believe we got more than two or three in this place today. Amen. And I believe we got more than two or three that, that knows the Lord, believes in his name. Amen. So God is going to be in the midst today. You've made your way here. So now what are you going to do that you're here today? Amen. Hallelujah. I know what we're going to do today. We're going to praise and worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. As we begin to sing this song, it's called Freedom. I want you to begin to think about what the Lord has brought you out of. You might have been in bondage, amen, but the Lord has brought you out and gave you freedom. Hallelujah. You might have had something in your life that was holding you down. Hallelujah. But the Lord has given you freedom. And today I want you to clap and I want you to worship the King of Kings because he has brought you a mighty long way. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
free today. Hallelujah. We've been made free today. That's right. You should feel liberty today. That's right. When the Holy Ghost begins to move, that should make you feel like you have liberty to rejoice, to shout, to praise Him. Hallelujah. Why? Because that's what He wants from you. That's right. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to see you worship. That's right. Hallelujah. He desires that from us. Amen. Hallelujah. One more time. Everybody say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Amen. You hate to even transition any anything from this, but uh, we do have to take up an offering and uh, go over a couple of announcements. Praise the Lord. If the ushers want to go ahead and uh, get ready and make their way up to take up uh, tithes and offering, praise the Lord. For those who are members of the church, tithe-paying members, uh, there will be a business meeting on February the 23rd, right after service. That is uh, this Wednesday, right after service. So, we have any tithe payers in here? Any tithe payers? Come on, just what, two or three? Come on, we have any tithe payers in here? Man, I hope we have a few more than that. Amen. So, there's a business meeting for you Wednesday night after service. Praise the Lord. We're going to go over uh, all the numbers for the, the previous year and uh, so that you're informed. Amen. So you know what's going on around here. Uh, we have something for the men coming up. If you're a man in here, raise your hand. All right. We're still not. Still. <laughs> we have any men in here? Come on now. On February the 26th, Saturday, that's next Saturday, this Saturday coming up, there's a wild game dinner for the men. Amen. Brother Landon, you going to show up on time? Where are you at? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, there he is. He's sitting down over there. Brother Landon is working very hard to get this thing together. We're going to have something for the men to have fun. You're going to come and we're going to eat some, some wild game, hang out. We're going to have... Uh, a man of God talked to us for a few minutes during that whole process. It's going to be great. But this is an outreach, guys. This is something you can use to get your buddy or to get your brother or your son or your co-worker to get them to come and be a part of this, try to win their soul. Hey, man, this is not just for us to come and eat a meal. I mean, we'll do that and we'll enjoy it, but it's much more than that. We want to get together. We want to see our family saved. Amen. Does any men out here have somebody you know that you'd like to see saved? Well, this is your opportunity. So, hey, man, come and eat this meal with us. They may not come to a church service, but maybe they'll come and they'll sit down and eat uh, some deer meat or, or what have you with you, something along those lines. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. So if you're a man this next Saturday, I know I'm taking a long time on announcements. I'm sorry. Um, ladies conference coming. Uh, March the 10th through the 12th in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee. So ladies, get ready for that. Uh, and um, our 20th anniversary homecoming service. Yeah. That's right. Praise the Lord. It's March the 26th at 7 p.m. through the 27th at, at 10.30 in the morning. So it'll be Saturday and Sunday. Amen. March the 26th and the 27th. We'll have homecoming. That's going to be excellent. And then we have men's conference coming, something else for the men. So if you're a man and you want to be involved in something, we have stuff for you to do. And if you want to do even more, come see me. All right. If you're a man and you want to be involved in something in the church, come see me. But we're having a men's conference. We're going to have excellent speakers. We're going to have an excellent time. It's going to be for two days. It's going to be a Friday night and a Saturday on March the 29th at 7 p.m. PM on that Friday and 30th at 9 a.m. here at the church. Get your calendars out. Mark it on your calendar. If you're a man and you go to this church, you need to be at this man's conference. Amen? 
Praise the Lord. Why don't we lift our hands right now? Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, for this opportunity that you've given us today. Lord, I pray that you bless this offering. Bless everyone who's giving faithfully in their tithes. You see every need, oh God. You know how to meet every need. I pray that you would allow your, your angels to go forth before us, oh God. Open the doors that need to be opened in every individual's life, oh God. Do a healing and deliverance in our minds and in our bodies today, Lord. Strengthen today, Lord God. Move in a mighty way. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you all the praise. Somebody say in Jesus' name.
never stop working, never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Right where you're sitting, we just reach your hands to God and just give him a little honor. Come on, respect his presence in this house right now. 
Come on, he's able to. He's working across this place. He's working in this altar today. He's touching needs in his house today. Come on. People are connecting with his spirit. Come on, would you try it just, just for a few minutes? If you just want to close your eyes, that's fine. But lift your hand and say, Lord, I need a connection. I need another touch, oh, Lord. God, touch my heart today, oh, Lord. Yes, God, we thank you for what we feel in this room. Come on, he's in the house. The way maker's here right now. The promise keeper's here in this room right now. Come on, just reach up to him with everything you got. Say, God, it's me, Lord. Ah, Lord, I need you today, oh, God. Lord, you see the hands across this place that are up, Lord. I pray that you anoint their lives, touch the situation, God. Lord, let the Holy Ghost minister to their hearts right now. God, you are a way maker, God. Yes, Lord, you are a promise keeper, Lord. We give you praise, give you glory, give you honor today, oh, Lord. Oh, God, we give you glory, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus is in this house, folks. The Savior's in the house. The healer's in the house. He said, by these stripes you are healed. And I'm telling you, we are healed today. If you're sick, you can be healed. God can give you that miracle today. If you believe that, I want you to give the Lord a hand clap of praise with me together today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say it with me. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome God we serve today. Oh, the Lord is here. And, and, and this is what I really am just so excited about is he's still, he's still in a saving business. He's still in the healing business. He's in the, he's in the direction business. And all we got to do is let him. How many is willing to let God work in your life? Amen. Let's give the choir a hand today. Thank you guys for the music. Some of the best singing I think I've heard you guys do. Y'all are just getting better and better. Some of the best I've heard since I've been pastor anyway. Good job, guys. Thank you so much for the word of uh, the words that was sung and music played. These guys practice and, and practice and, and let God use them. I'm thankful for that. And they know when God moves, we just move along with the flow of God's spirit. And that's what I want to become. I want to become what God wants. Praise God. And I want the service to be what God wants out of it today. Amen. If you got your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 1 today. And let's read in Mark chapter 1. It's good to have everybody in the house of the Lord today. We've got a few that's out for different reasons. But it's good to have all of our visitors. If you are a visitor, I hope you got one of those blue bags that we pass out to everybody. And you got a visitor's card. And we'd love to uh, get your information. And and know who you are, but thank you for coming. Let's give all of our visitors a hand today for being here. We so appreciate you for being here today. And uh, we do have a little blue bag gift for you somewhere if you haven't got it yet. But if, you, uh, if the ushers make sure that gets done and, and our, our welcome committee as well. But Mark chapter 1 verse 14 says, Now after that John was put into prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Now, I want to read one more text before you sit down. And it will be on the board unless you want to turn there real quick. Romans chapter 13 verse number 11. And we'll read this again later. But I want to read it for the up front to we to have it. And that knowing the time that now. Everybody say now. now. It is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. How many can say amen to those texts today? Lay your Bibles down with you and cut your phones off if you don't mind, and let's pray. God, we love you. I pray, God, you touch this place today. God, the anointing of God is all over this place, but God, I need you to go before me one more time. God, I'm carrying your anointed word today, Lord, and I ask you to anoint me to preach your anointed word. But God, I ask you to condition hearts all across this place, Lord, to realize what is being preached and what is being put forth is your word. It is your gospel, Lord. And we come today to preach your gospel. But, Lord, we ask you to help us not only to hear your gospel, but help us to believe your gospel today, Lord, and live your gospel according to where you have written it and penned it in the pages for us to live by. In Jesus' name we praise you. And everybody said amen. God bless you. You can be seated. 
Hallelujah. I, I, I had a, so far, this weekend's been a great weekend for Sister Hunt and I. We was able to, to uh, go and do a, a marriage retreat, and it was just a great time we had. And we was able to speak and share 32 years of wisdom of what uh, things not to do for sure. Don't know everything to do yet, but we know a lot of things not to do after 32 years. But I, I just began to pray about today after getting through the weekend. I said, God, what would you like for me to to speak to this congregation on today. It's like you just come out of the sky, just boom, there it is, about our future and what, ho- what holds the future, what, what is in the future for me. And so I began to get it ready today, and last night I began to pray about it. I said, God, is this what you want? You have to open it up. And I titled today, Planning for the Future. Now, planning for the future is good, and most of you here have a calendar that you plan by. Uh, I told him as a pastor, we try to do one for the church and we try to have dates set, but I, don't, I really can't schedule my future because I never know what the phone call is going to be at 3 o'clock in the morning and then that's when my day may start. So I don't really have plans except for what the calendar is, but I do know that can change any time. But we all like to plan for the future, and it's a good thing, and, and we do a lot of planning around here. We have a, uh, our whole year is planned out for the church. Well, we go, when our major revivals, our major conferences that we have, all you got to do is go on the calendar and on the, on the website, and you can see all of that, and, and you can schedule your vacations around all that. And so that's what it's there for. But, but the good thing is we love planning. We plan for college. Some of us do, and um, it's a good thing. College is good. I won't speak against college, except when the professor tells me God's not real, then we got a problem. How many people have went to school and professors has turned their minds? But I, I'm going to tell you, if you're going to college, go with a Holy Ghost field, save mine, and it'll be all right. Praise God. But college is a good thing to plan for. Uh, marriage, that, that's, that's good. I mean, I like marriage. We got a wedding we're going to do here in a couple weeks, and we're excited about that. But, you know, we, we plan for these things, and we plan for, uh, you know, some, sometimes we plan for children, and sometimes they just happen. But, but uh, we plan finances. I hope you got your finances laid out. Uh, you know, if, if you got so many bills a month, you got to lay that money aside. That this is what this bill's for. This is what this is for. Because, uh, you know, you can't say, well, I don't have my whole bill money, so I'm going to go spend it anyway. No, you save it. You, you plan. And you put it in a, in, a, in a spot that you won't spend it because you know when I get the rest, i got to pay this bill. So it's a planning process in our finances, in our saving. We have many routine plans that we do. I, I even had somebody come today to tell me that their vacation plan. And I thought, well, that's in my notes. And I says, but we plan these things. We plan them and lay them out. And we plan birthday parties. Anybody ever planned a birthday party? You guys done one for me here recently, last December, and surprised me. I've never been surprised like that. But we plan these things such as anniversaries and holidays. And, and for sure, we always want to make sure that our plans are in the future. We want to make sure that I got it planned. I've got a vacation plan. I've got a conference planned. And, and we want to make sure they all are prepared and they're well. And we want to make sure they're going to be successful, you know, and especially when your wife plans that getaway vacation and you want to make sure you're you're trying to work to get it paid for but she's making sure now make sure you don't forget make sure you put it on the calendar because we want to get all these plans and our desires because we want to reach our goal of what we got planned let me just ask a a a crazy question because i promise you most of everybody in this room has this but how many has plans scheduled for this year already some of you don't know what you're doing. I understand. You just, you're lost and don't know if you got, I got plans. I, I do. I've got stuff laid on the counter. I got plans. I've, I got vacations. Some of you are punching your husband. You need to make plans. I see you. And I, I understand that. But we want plans in our life. However, if we're honest with ourselves, most of the time, most of the plans and goals that we have are simply related to this physical life, to the life that we live in. Most of the plans we do can and, and, and th- there are, you know, earthly plans, and they're good plans. I'm not saying you shouldn't plan. You should have ideas. You should have plans. And all this is what we should do. But plans that usually don't involve eternity is what I'm talking about in that process. We plan things and not thinking that I might not even get to make that vacation, or I might not even get to get to that marriage ceremony, or I might. We don't think like that. We just go ahead and mark it down. And we tell our boss, i got to have off that day. We, 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 we rotate everything we can to make our plans work. Whatever I have to move, whatever I have to counsel, 
That's what I'm going to do because i got to make sure that my plans are held to where they need to be. But plans that usually don't involve eternity and what happens after our earthly life, my friend, is finished is going to matter more than those plans that you have for this year. James says it like this in James 4 and 14. He says, whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? What is your life? It's just even a vapor that appears for a little while and then, or a little time and then it vanishes away. Church, I want to tell you, life is short. It's shorter than we all think. You know, when I was growing up, it only, you only heard of people in their 80s, 90s, maybe 100 dying. But that's not the case anymore. The older I get, the more I realize death is not, has an age on it anymore. It's, it's just here for a little while. And I want to tell you, Years pass by quickly. I know you kids think it takes forever to get to Christmas, but it seems like we just got through wrapping presents and it's time to wrap them again. Time flies. The older I get, it, 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 it is, it is uh, I think we need to remember things in our life. And, and, and despite of the importance of the investments that we have here and now, everything that we invested time in, and these are great things that we invest in, it is even more critical to make plans now for what happens after death. Now, I'm not trying to sell you a barrel, a barrel policy today, but I'm trying to tell you that it's already been paid. The barrel policy that I'm talking about today has already been paid for. I'm going to give you a free barrel policy today. Is that all right? I'm going to give you one that's already been taken care of. We should ask in this season in our lives, and everybody in here is in a different season. I see young seasons on the front row, mid-age seasons on the front row. I see seniors on the front row. I see all this, and I look across the sanctuary, and I see the same thing. I see dark hair. I see gray hair. I see uh, all kinds of ages and seasons. Uh, but I think today we need to stop and look at the season that we're in, and we need to ask ourselves, are we ready for the spiritual future of our life? If Jesus come back today, if he was to come back for you today, sir, would you be ready? Would you be ready to, to go home with Jesus? And listen, have, have, what we got to do, we, let me just ask you a question. Are you prepared for eternity? Now, some of you don't want to look at to your right, don't want to look to your left, because you know they know you better than you know you sometimes. Because we're, we're afraid to, to make that statement. But I want to just say today, I boldly, proudly state that I'm ready for eternity today. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've been baptized in Jesus' name. I'm faithful to God. And let me top all that off. I paid my tithes today. So I know I'm ready for heaven. <laughs> Woo, that'll preach right there, won't it? I'm not going to preach against tithes. But Christ was born to die. Why did he die? That we can live. And I don't know about you, we don't have to die lost in eternity. We don't have to die lost mad. We don't have to die lost and, and, and get upset because nobody told me. Because I come today to tell you God already died for us, uh, that we can live. We live not just for the specific time of 70 to 80 years on earth, uh, but we live for eternity. Come on, I'm living for eternity today. I don't know about you. Y'all, undoubtedly, I got a lot of people that don't know if you're ready or not. Uh, but if you're ready, you ought to get excited today that my soul is ready and I'm ready to meet God. If he's ready, I'm ready. So our preparation for death is what frees us in order to be able to live this earthly life that we live to the fullest and to the potential that God has given us. We can be happy. I don't know about y'all, but I'm happy being a Christian. I'm happy to be sold out for Christ. I'm happy to be able to look at the devil and say, I love God more than you. I'm happy to say I'm more faithful to God than I am my, my ski boat or my motorcycle or come on somebody. I'm happy to say God is first in my life. He comes before anything. So all through, you know, life, humanity speaking, we have a, a natural dread of death. We don't want to die. Does anybody here want to die right now? Raise your hand. Oh, that was a safe one because y'all don't raise your hand if I ask you on a million dollars right now. So I'm good. I'm just tired, Brother Hunt. I know. I'm tired, too. But this is the thing. We don't want to die. It's a dreadful. We don't want to talk about death. You don't want to hear all of that stuff. But we can still spiritually look for, toward death. I don't want to die. I don't, I'm not crazy about me laying in a casket and y'all crying over me. Please don't cry at my funeral. Would you please? Don't cry at my funeral. I mean, if you want to shed a little tear, that'd be all right. But 
But I want you to shout with joy. I want it to be a joyful shout, a joyful tear that Brother Hunt is shouting on the streets of glory. He's in heaven. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about that place called heaven. Woo. If we believe in resurrection of the body, and I do, I know you believe it, and the everlasting or the life everlasting, and I do, and I believe you do, if we believe that, then we should prepare for that. We ought to, we ought to plan for that. We ought to have it in our calendar dates. Uh, Lord, whatever day it is, I want to prepare for it. I want to plan for it. I want to have things right. Uh, I just want to preach to you right now. I want to take a pause out of notes. Uh, take me a sea line and praise God first. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but I want to come back and tell you today, folks, uh, if, you ain't, if you ain't got it right, uh, you're not going to make it to heaven. If you don't have things where it ought to be, you're not going to make it to heaven. Eternity is a real thing. We need to make sure we're planning for that place, that place called heaven. We ought to be planning, living now like we truly accept it. And, and we got to, that we're ready for it. Living now like, hey, I want my life where it needs to. I want to be prepared. I want to be prayed up. Kingdom, my friend, I just want to tell you right up front. Uh, my friend, our scripture passage today comes from the first gospel written. And the first recorded words of Jesus was uh, emphatically, and it states these, time is up. God's kingdom is here. He, he was saying, repent and believe the good news, the gospel. Church, I'm going to tell you, too many people don't believe the good news anymore. Too many people are living any way they want to and thinking they're okay. That's not true. People are getting baptized in Jesus' name and go back into their sin the same old way. My friend, you just got wet if that's what you did. We need some people to say, you know what, I'm ready to sell out, Pastor Hunt. Uh, I'm ready to quit cussing. I'm ready to quit dipping. I'm ready to quit drinking. I'm ready to quit running around. I'm ready to quit doing things I shouldn't do. I'm ready to get my life right. Uh, I'm ready to quit looking at pornography. I'm ready to quit all the filth of the world, and I want to give my life to God. I come today to tell you that's how you plan for a place called heaven. This puts us an end to any attempts to, day, to delay the decision. When Jesus says, now is the time, it puts any, we shouldn't delay the decision anymore and find excuses why we can't. I'm not ready. Maybe later. Maybe when I get a little older. Come on, friend. I, I'm just going to preach to you right now, but I'm worried about how less and less People think that the gospel is not really needed in our homes anymore. It's getting stronger and stronger in the day that we live in that people don't feel that we need to be taught the word of God anymore. I don't need preaching anymore. Give me a good music beat and let me shout and go home. But I come today to tell you the only way we're going to make it to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And he said, I am the word. I am the word, folks. We need this word in our lives today. Jesus elevated the priority by making it a right now thing, he said. When is a good time to get saved? Right now. When is a good time to go to church? Right now. When is a good time to go to an altar? Right now. When is a good time for me to give my life to God at the altar? Right now. When is a good time for me to just come that crazy shouter in the church service again? Right now. I've heard people say, well, when I quit doing the bad things in my life and I quit moving around and I quit doing this and I quit doing that, I'm going to give my life to God. I want to challenge you something. How about just come up here and say, God, I'm all yours. I give you everything I got. And God, if you'll take me, I'll live for you. I'll stand for you. I'll believe for you. I will not let things get between me and you. Now is the day. I told him at the marriage seminar last night, I said, think about this. The day of Pentecost never would have happened if they would have brought their tape measure to the service that day. That day that the Holy Ghost fell, I know they prayed for 50 days. In the last 10 days in the upper room, they prayed. And, and, I, and I told folks, I said, there was 500 that Jesus told to tarry in Jerusalem to be endued with power from on high, but only 120 showed up. So people have been missing church since then. But guess, watch this. He said, but you tarry to be a dude with power. If they would have brought their tape measure that night to have church, uh, it wouldn't have been a day of Pentecost. What do you mean by a tape measure? Because Peter was in that same congregation. The same Peter that just not got through cussing around a barrel a few days before that, swearing, I don't even know him. 
So he cussed and he lied. And if you want me to say cursing, that's fine, cursing. But I, I'm just the old country boy. I eat white beans and cornbread and cornbread and milk and pork chops and fried chicken and gravy poured over all that. That's what I eat. I'm just country. But then he went to brown the barrel and he got to cussing, swearing. I don't know him. I don't know this guy. But just a few days later, he's in an upper room and all of a sudden there came a... <laughs> Mighty rushing wind that blew in the house, uh, and it didn't. It filled everybody but Peter, because Peter just got through cursing and swearing around a barrel. No, the Bible said the whole house were filled where they were sitting. Woo. How many like the Holy Ghost just to fall on you right now? God wants to fill you, sir, with the Holy Ghost today. God wants to change your life today. God wants to take the cursing out, the lying out, the swearing out. He wants to put you in the right pathway. That's what kind of God we have today. The God I serve is in this house today. If you believe that, say amen. amen. He's in this house today. Clap your hands one more time to God. So God just kind of, think about this. He just moved us right up to the top of the level, top of the story, that right now is a good time to give your life to God. Right now is a good time to have salvation. He, 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 he didn't intend for it to be, i get around to it later. i take care of it. You know, when my kids get a little older, I don't have to work so much, then i become more of a worker at church. Or i become a more dedicated father when I get, don't have to work so much. No, he said now, is, he didn't say I'm going to do it when I get around to it or get to it later. And he didn't make it a multiple choice. Uh, if you want to live for me, you can. Or if you want salvation, you can do it this way or this way or that way. But he says now is a time to give your life to God. I'm not, I'm not downplaying today the importance of living a fruitful life that we live and having a blessed life. And, and I'm not uh, playing it down to have good things on this earth as Christians. And we should. We should love our earthly life because uh, it is a great gift from God. And I'm thankful that God's given me this life. I'm thankful that God let me have breath today. You see, if he didn't want me to live and preach today, he wouldn't have woke me up. Uh, but you know what? He gave me life today, and he, he let me have this life. So I'm thankful for that. But my point is today is we were made for something greater than just living a life. We're made for something greater than just having vacation plans on our calendar so we can please our kids, take them to a, a park and spend thousands of dollars, have to come back home and work really hard and get so tired again to go on another vacation next year. We're made for more than just, all of that is good, understand me, but we're made for more than just that today. The kingdom is here, he said, repent and believe the good news. And this puts an end, I think, to the attempts of us delaying it. We can't delay it. we got to get to it now. Everybody say now. Yeah. Amen. So I think my point here today is that we should be planning for the future. You know, we plan for everything in life. And matter of fact, probably a lot of you today have got your funeral arrangements already planned. And some of you that are my age don't think it's time yet. you got plenty of time to plan that. No, no, no ma'am, no sir. It's something you just have to do. But some of us has already sit down and got it laid out. This is what I want. Uh, what I want you to sing at my song, my funeral. It's an old song, but the song says, I just started living. Wouldn't that be pretty awesome? You say, Brother Hunt, you're going to be dead. Oh, no, I'm not. Uh, the old body, the old flesh is going to be dead, but this old spirit's just started living in eternity. That's what I'm making plans for. I'm making plans to get out of this world. You know why? Because this world is not my home. I'm just the passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. They're all expecting me, and I can't wait to see them either. Let me tell you today, folks, uh, I've got my plans uh, to see Jesus one day. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 9 says, But it is written, Eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither hath it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. God has prepared it for you. The scripture is clear that God's desire is for us to, our, our destiny to be united with him one day in heaven. We are nothing more than aliens and strangers that are passing through this world. We are only here for a brief, as the scripture says, like a vapor moment of time. The earth is not our, our true home, folks. The one we spend all of our energy and time and 
building a kingdom in our life. You know, my kingdom is here is over on 312 Quinn Road, and, and it's just a piece of a land and a piece of a house and a piece of brick and mortar. But all of that's going to be gone one day. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what kingdom I'm really working for. Uh, I'm working what he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things are going to be added. Uh, I'm seeking for a kingdom that's not made by hands. Uh, but I'm seeking for a kingdom uh, that I'm planning on reaching to one day where it's pure love, uh, pure understanding. My friend, that's a place called heaven. I'm seeking after that today. We are only here for, like I said, a brief turn. Eternity, all through the, 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 all through the life, eternity of the, is the future and the nature. Eternity is going to come. We've we got to be ready for it. My friend, we've got to be, be settled. We, we know that eternity is coming. And don't be settled to live in this world because we're going to live in eternity somewhere. Jesus gave us instructions and he said, repent. Everybody say it with me, repent. I, I tell you what, maybe your neighbor didn't hear me. Look at your neighbor and say, repent. Come on, it's time to repent. Get it right, Brother Terry. Get it right. It's time to repent. The Lord is saying to us, repent. Get things in order. Get your house in order. Repent and believe. He said in our text today, repent and believe the good news. We got to go back and believe the word of God again. Come on, we, we got to believe it from maps to maps. Y'all believe that? There's folks that don't believe you got to live out of the Old Testament. He said, I didn't come to change the law. I come to fulfill the law. Come on, we need, we need to get back in the Word again. We need to start living the good news again. I, I, I'm hurt. I had a conversation with somebody the other day, but I'm hurt and I'm broken of the churches that are getting away from the gospel. They are. There's churches out there that's got steeples on them. They don't want you to preach the gospel anymore. They just want you to let everybody do what they want to do, live free, live whatever. But I come today, as Jesus did, and preaching the good news, the good gospel, and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand today. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. If Jesus preached it 2,000 years ago plus, uh, how much more closer is the kingdom of heaven today? I come today to tell you, if you don't hear nothing else I said, please hear this today, sir. You better quit playing around with God. You better hear me. You better quit playing around with God. You better quit going against the man of God that's preaching the gospel to. You better get yourself in an altar, and you better repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand today. You better get things right in your home. Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house today. Oh. Woo. Repent and believe the good news. So with that presented to us today, Right out of the word of God, the good gospel, the king of kings, the Lord of lords told us, repent for the kingdom of heaven is hand. It comes down to what we're planning and what we will do with Jesus with the good news. What are my plans today? Oh, I wish I could come to individual people today, but let me ask you as individuals today, what is your plans for your soul? News he presents to us for eternal future that he talks about here in our text so how do we plan for the future, Pastor Hunt? How do we get things where they need to be? I'm glad you asked. Uh, you know, if you go to a funeral home, they'll sit down with you, and they'll, they'll bring this big piece of paper out, and, and they'll ask, you know, what do you want sung at your funeral, and how, do you, how many songs, and what kind of color casket do you want, and they can give all of that. Uh, but today, let me tell you how to plan for your future. Uh, amen. For the future of eternity. First, uh, we have to do what I said a moment ago. Uh, we have to repent. A repent is a 180, not a 360. Come on, you can't repent. God, I'm sorry for doing this. Uh, and turn a 360 and go do it again. I'm just going to preach to you. It's time to throw the cigarettes away. It's time to throw the cussing away. It's time to throw the marijuana away. It's time to throw the prescription drugs that you don't need away. We get addicted to this world. We get addicted to what they have to offer. And it's time to get rid of this junk of lying, swearing. Come on, it's time to get rid of it. I'm going to go out on an old apostolic limb right now. And I'm gonna, it's going to break probably, but I, it's all right. I catch the next one and I'll hang on until I get there. But let me tell you, some of you need to get rid of your TV. You know, back when I was growing up, you couldn't have a TV and go to apostolic church. 
I'm preaching about 100% people got TVs or glorified monitors, whatever you want to call it. You say, why am I going to get rid of my TV? Because you're watching rated R movies. You need to get rid of it. Get rid of your, your rated R movies. I, well, I, I just get rid of the rated R. If you can't get rid of it, get rid of it. I talked to a man one time. He was addicted to pornography really hard in his, in his life. And he, he said, I need help, Pastor. I need help. I said, I'm going to tell you how to do it. Go home and take, a, take your computer. Take it to the backyard and take a sledgehammer and smash it as hard as you can. Oh, but, but that's how I keep up with my checkbook. That's how I balance my checking account. And you know what? He couldn't do it. He said, oh, I can't do it. You know what? I don't know where he's at today. I know he's not in church. He's not living for God. But listen to me. I'm not saying the computer is the sin, but it's the, it's the things that you let go through that computer that is the sin. This is, I'm still showing you how to plan yourself. Get things planned and ready to go. You say, Brother Hunt, you're kind of, you're kind of tight on it. I'm going to tell you what's going to even be worse. If you think you have a problem with a computer, why are you giving your kid a computer? Come on, adults, you think your cell phone's giving you a problem. You have a problem not going place you shouldn't go to. Why are you buying your kid a cell phone? I know why you're buying your kid a cell phone. I want a phone. <laughs> Shut up. Take the phone and go somewhere. Listen, I'm talking about planning ourselves for heaven. I want to go to heaven. I want my kids to go to heaven. I want my grandkids to go to heaven. Come on, my friend. Ah, oh, let me get off of that. Y'all can go home and say, Brother Hunt's preaching against TVs now. I got to find another church. Only if you can't watch the right things, get rid of it. Just with your radio station, if you can't listen to the right music, blow it up. Come on. We, we, got, we, got, a, we got a control valve right there. We, can, we, can, we control what we watch. Come on, we control. We can control it. We can monitor what we watch. We can do it. To, hey, I'm going to tell you, at the Hunt's house, uh, there's many times that that movie got really good. But you know what? Click. Because I like that off button. I got that power of the Holy Ghost that, that still pricks my heart. I don't know about y'all, but I feel like preaching right now. Hey, it still pricks my heart when I hear cuss words. Oh, oh, I don't like that. Hey, I could be in the middle of a restaurant. Somebody across the restaurant says something bad. I think, whoa, what's that guy's problem? You know why? Because the Holy Ghost don't agree with that kind of talk. The Holy Ghost don't like that kind of view. But you see, when my Holy Ghost gets weak, uh, I just sit there and watch it and don't even pay attention. They're saying the F word. They're saying GD word. They're batting out all this stuff. It don't bother me. That's when my Holy Ghost ain't there. My Holy Ghost is backslid. And, but you know what? When I'm fresh on the Holy Ghost, uh, I get into a service like, you know, that's why I shout every Sunday. You're probably back here thinking, there goes Brother Hunt again. You know why? Because i got to keep that Holy Ghost strong. Because I know when I go to the restaurant after a while, that waiter ain't going to like me, and I'm not going to like him probably. But it's somehow or the Holy Ghost has got to turn that situation around. <laughs> you know, the Holy Ghost will make you love a bad waiter. <laughs> Woo. The Holy Ghost will make you tip them when they don't even wait on you good. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to get off of that one. I'm just going to be honest with you. If you're one of them rude people in a restaurant, don't ask me to go eat with you. Even if you're going to buy my meal, don't, don't let me go with you. I don't like rude people. I like people that tip good. And I like people that go in there with a witness in their heart. To, hey, I don't, I don't like mustard. Hey, it's a way to ask to change it, not to throw it at them and get mustard all over them. Come on, you know what? This, all that I'm talking to you today, you may not believe this, but it's a plan. I'm planning myself to get to heaven. And I want to take that waiter at the restaurant with me to heaven. Come on. She might sit on these pews next Sunday. She might need the Holy Ghost. She might have to look at me, and I may be the one praying for her or him. But let me tell you that I'm planning my way to heaven. Repentance should bring radical transformation in our lives, by the way. When we repent, it ought to bring radical, radical transformation. When you repent and get the Holy Ghost. Oh, let me just preach. I I'm tired of the devil telling folks that they can get the Holy Ghost and don't have to change. That's a lie from the pits of hell. You will change. It's going to be a radical transformation in your life. Repentance. 
It is a change of the heart and mind and will. Repentance calls for a sincere and through change of a mind. To repent is to turn from sin with genuine sorrow, to turn to God in confession and submission. I'm still telling you how to plan your way to heaven. Stay with me. The whole person, the whole person is involved. The mind, the feelings, the will, everything changes when you repent to God. You start living different. You start walking different. You start acting different. You start loving people different. You start paying tithes differently. You start giving differently. You start loving everybody. You don't care who's in the choir. Oh, Lord, bless them. Bless them. Bless them. You don't even care who gets to sing more than you do. I'm preaching right now. You ain't caught it yet. You don't get an attitude because you don't lead a song. Get over it, honey bun. If you get the Holy Ghost, you want somebody else to lead so you can worship while they are leading. I don't know about you, but God gave me the Holy Ghost, and I got a right to shout. I got a right to get radical. When God changed me, he radically changed me for the good. So really the blunt reality of repentance is not just to get to heaven or not even just to miss hell over. But the reason we repent and repentance is necessary and faith in our lives from this probably this rational life that we live, that our sinful, if we realize our sinfulness, what it does is it separates us from the intimate, eternal, loving God. And that's why I come and repent, because I don't want anything to separate me from God. Let me tell you, God is a loving God, but he can't love your sinful life. He's not going to love your sinful life. He's a loving God, but he's not going to sin you. Hear me and hear me well. Only those who respond in repentance and faith can experience God's grace and his redemptive reality, but we must repent. Only those who respond to repentance is going to be able to feel that. Secondly, things that we have to do to plan is we have to believe the good news, the good news of the gospel. It's still true. The word, the very gospel, Jesus himself preached it. it it's, it's what we're asked to believe. We've got to believe this gospel, the gospel that the kingdom of God has come. It has come, folks, uh, that God is with us uh, and that he loves and he cares for us. Uh, We are incapable of earning it. Uh, We can't earn this thing called grace. Uh, We can't earn it. Uh, Being good enough just ain't going to do it. Being a good old boy, helping somebody change a flat, uh, it's not going to get it. Uh, We can't work for it. Uh, You can't get a a hold of it and say, I'm going to trade or buy and sell it. Uh, No, you can't. Uh, As we heard many times before in Ephesians chapter 2 and 8 through 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of ourselves or yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. If music get ready to come today, I would love to say, since you paid your tithes this morning, you're saved. But that ain't, that's not what saves us. That's what keeps you saved. Woo, that'll, that'll preach right there. That's what keeps you saved. But let me ask you in closing today, will you make your plans for your future today? Will you make your commitment to God today? Are you ready to, to say, okay, God, if, if today's my last day on earth, I want to commit my life to you today. It's important. You know, you know why you pre-plan your funeral? You pre-plan it so your family won't have to deal with it. Because they already hurt that you're gone, believe it or not. they already struggling because you left the lie. But the pre-planning is that you did it so they don't have to go through it. It's done. It's taken care of. How much more should it be today in our spiritual life that we pre-plan that our life is ready? I love preaching the funerals of the people that had planned their life to go to heaven. Those are a lot easier funerals to preach when you know somebody's in heaven. I've never preached a funeral that the family didn't think that their loved one was in heaven. They thought that process, but their planning didn't show that they were prepared. Their planning, their pre-plans didn't show that. But let me ask you today, are you ready for your spiritual future today? Have you finalized your plans for eternity? Are they finalized? Or you still got them up in your safe looking at them every day thinking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that when I get a chance. I'm going to get to that when I quit wanting to run around. I'm going to get to that when I quit the drinking or the partying. When I, when I don't like doing this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to that. Have you finalized the plan for eternity? In all of our planning today, Jesus has shown us 
that we, what we need to do. And my question to you before I close, are you ready to do it? Are you ready? You got your plans? Or have, you, have, you, have you finalized that eternity plan? Have you, how you finalize it, Brother Hunt? As I said, you repent. Then you got to be baptized in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Let me say it one more time. You got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. That's above all names, according to Acts chapter 4 and 12. And then you got to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other language as God gives the utterance. That's the only way that you plan. That's the only funeral plan that's laid out for the, for the eternity. That's the eternity plan that you have to have in your life to make it to heaven. And I'm sorry, but if you got breath and you hear this message, you just received your opportunity. You just received another chance to make your plans and, and your calling and your election sure. We must repent and believe the good news, church. I'm going to read Romans 13, 11 one more time before I close. And we're going to open this altar. And that knowing the time, you can ask an atheist almost, and they'll tell you, this world's about to be over. It's not a secret of the times we live in. This world is about over. We don't have long left to prepare and plan our lives anymore. The devil is, is working overtime to distract people, to make people think they're okay. You don't have to do this. You don't have to, but you know what? We need to make a liar out of the devil and make a stand and start planning today, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. I've been living this way for a long time. Since I was 12 years old, and I'm 50 years old today. Some of you have been living longer than I'm old. 53 years almost. I heard that, was it? But you know you're still planning, aren't you? I'm planning on leaving this world. As a matter of fact, it's, almost, it's a guarantee that everybody in this room is going to leave this world. Guaranteed. It's not no maybe. It's not, I'm going to live forever because you're not. Well, I may not die, Brother Hunt, but you're still going to leave this world. And it's also a guarantee today. It's a guarantee that you're going to spend eternity somewhere. You're going to spend eternity somewhere. And I, I'm going to just go ahead and let you know up front, there's only two places that we're going to spend eternity. One or the other. There's no, there's no in between. You ain't going to be able to hang out with the boys. Or you may be hanging out with the boys, all right, but it's going to be over in the hot place. There's only two places that we're going to spend eternity. It's heaven and it's hell. You know, I, I, I want to say this. What time I got? Uh, the Baptist ain't left the restaurant yet. Give me another minute, please. I, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get out of here, okay? If we, get, if we get a hold of what I'm talking about right now, like we should, nothing else will matter today to you. Nothing else has ever been said or done or anything that took place in the, in the past would matter to you if you can get a hold of what I'm telling you, that eternity is about to happen. I don't, I don't want to scare nobody today, but somebody's eternity could start today. We could have you right here in the front by this time next, uh, next Sunday and have a, have a going away celebration party for you. Let me ask you, you going to give us something to celebrate about? I've made my calling and my election sure. Listen to me. I know people are getting fidgety and ready to go, but let, let, let's all stand. I'm going to pray a prayer, and I want you to come to this altar today. But I want you to know, if you, have, if you haven't planned, I want you to grab your wife and grab your children and say, come on, I want you to go to the altar with me. And Dad, I, I wish every dad would bring their children and, and pray for their children today. It's not Father's Day, but we are still the priest. We're still the leader of the home. And I ask you to pray for your children that they be saved at all costs. Make sure they've got plans ready to meet God. Lord, I pray for these that are coming to this altar today. God, we're planning for the future right now because we know eternity is, hell, is going to be held in the future. Eternity is coming as sure as we're in this place. God, I know sometimes we leave at the most important part of the service, which is altar time. 
People be standing in the hall not thinking about what really is taking place. It's planning for the future right now in this altar. These that are standing at this altar today, God, they're planning for their future. They realize that eternity is real. Whether if it's heaven or whether if it's hell, we realize today it's real, God. And God, I believe you gave us a message, a warning message today to let us know that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That now is the day of salvation. You have told us one more time that today is the day that we need to make plans. Get our hearts right. Repent. Be baptized. Receive the Holy Ghost before it's too late. God, in the name of Jesus, I pray you stir hearts all across this building. Let them know this is the day, God. The kingdom of heaven is here, Lord. Let them know today is the day of salvation, Lord. Speak into lives, hearts all across this place that we will plan for you today, God, for that day that's about to come. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. Pray, folks, pray. receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We're going to baptize somebody today, but if you're ready, we got robes in the back. We got tiles. We got time. I know we got places to go and plans to do after a while, but right now, what's about to happen is more important than anything that's ever taken place. Somebody going down in the name of Jesus, you're making that commitment that you're going to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. You repent it now. God's going to fill you full of His Spirit. If you're here today, sir, today is your day. Today is the day. Now is the day of salvation. Let's believe it together. Let's sing their choruses. We're about to baptize Caleb in the name of Jesus.
Caleb Smith, upon confession of your faith and repentance toward God, I baptize you in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ for the mission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, touch my buddy, God. I pray your spirit will move, God, upon him today. Come on, church, let's rejoice with the angels of heaven. Lord, I pray your spirit will anoint him today, God. Let him feel your presence today. else want to be baptized? Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord one more good hand clap of praise. What an awesome God we serve. I want to encourage everybody in this room today to always got one more? All right. Get them ready. Get them ready. All right. We got another family that's going to get baptized praying a while ago. They repented of their sins. They want to make things right. Hey, this is talk, they're talking about eternity coming soon. It's coming soon, folks. Hey, let, let's don't forget what God is doing. I was going to say this when he's walking up. Your kid gets about an hour of Sunday school a week, maybe an hour of preaching a week. But I encourage you parents to start talking to your children about eternity because they got to spend eternity somewhere too. They've got to know what it takes to get to heaven. Oh, Brother Hunt, they're too young. I believe when a kid starts knowing right from wrong, when they get to the point that knows when they're doing wrong, they got to they gotta learn what sin is. Stay away from sin. Don't, we don't watch that on YouTube. We don't watch it on TV. We don't talk like that. We don't listen to that kind of music. Start teaching them now while they're young because eternity is waiting. They're going to have is waiting in the balance. It's out there. It's almost here. Eternity is almost time. God bless you today. If you want to just sing a chorus on waiting on this next family, be a minute. God bless you. We love you. If you can hang around, you can. If you got to go, we understand. Thank you, Bishop, for being here. But the Lord is in the house. Lord, sing it, God. I give you my heart. I give you my soul.
family. So I got the little, the little boy, I got the middle, and now, and, and I'm going to tell you what, she wasn't easy to snatch up. She kept fighting me for months and months and months, and finally, the Lord touched her heart. I praise the Lord right now. You know why? Because this is God's child. Devil, you're not getting this one. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Erica Chavez, upon confession of your faith and repentance towards God, I baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins.